In this video, we'll look at Apache Cassandra. Apache Cassandra is a fully distributed, structured key value storage system. It combines ideas from multiple places, most notably Google's Bigtable and Amazon's Dynamo. It uses consistent hashing of, for the sharding of data and has an interesting property of tunable consistency on a per operation basis, which we will see quite shortly. First, let's look at the data model in Cassandra. The data model is very similar to what you may have seen with HBase. Each record in Cassandra is indexed by a key. A database in Cassandra is known as a column family. So a column family consists of records that have individual columns with super columns and column names and column values. The super column can have nested data, so it can have multiple sub columns. Now let's see what are some of the operations that are supported on the data in Cassandra. It's the basic operations that you've seen with many NoSQL databases. You can do gets, inserts, and deletes. And these operations can be performed on individual rows, ranges, or slices. A range is, is a collection of rows, and a slice is a subset of columns. Cassandra has a very interesting architecture which is unlike what we've seen with many other NoSQL products. Cassandra is a fully distributed architecture where nodes are organized in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion. There's no single point of failure in a Cassandra cluster. The nodes communicate with each other to update the cluster state and also to keep note of the distribution of data in the cluster. The actual data is distributed throughout the cluster using a process called consistent hashing. In consistent hashing, the nodes are organized in a clockwise fashion around the range of keys. So each node will be responsible for a specific subset of the range of keys. In this example, we see four nodes, A, B, C, and D, arranged in clockwise fashion. The entire range value of hashes are distributed across the nodes. And for individual keys, they will be hashed, typically using a MD5 or a SHA-1 hash. Also, if there is a replication in the cluster, then if the replication factor is n, n nodes clockwise from the primary node are used to hold the replicas of that primary node. So let's take a closer look at replication. Like I mentioned, n nodes clockwise from the primary node are used to hold the replicas of the primary node. Now, replicas can be kept up to date using a process called read repair if they ever diverge. The process is handled by the concept of Merkle trees. Now, Merkle trees have an interesting property where the hashes at each level of the tree correspond to the hashes of the children. So it can be quickly computed which part of a tree has changed by simply looking at the hash values. Now, let's take a look at the consistency model in Cassandra. Cassandra supports a number of consistency models and these levels actually uh, are indicated from zero to all. The level of consistency required is specified per operation. So you can perform a read or write in Cassandra using any of these consistency levels. The consistency level zero is actually unsupported for reads because it doesn't make sense to read from zero nodes. However, in a write, uh, Specifying the level zero does not wait for confirmation from the cluster that a write actually occurred. In fact, that write operation will not block. It will return immediately. Level one is also unsupported for reads. Instead, uh, reads need to use the one model. Uh, for writes, a minimum of one node will commit the write operation. And in case a node, there is a node failure, they can use a hint, which we'll explain in the next slide, to count as a write. In the one level for consistency, uh, for reads, you immediately return the record that is held by the first node that responds to the query. If after the read request is performed, if there is any inconsistency in the replicas, which can be figured out by comparing the Merkle trees, a read repair operation is performed. In writes, using the one level will ensure that the write updates the value of that particular key to at least one node before returning to the client. In the quorum model, all nodes are queried, and once a majority of replicas, that is replication factor by two plus one, once they respond, you can return to um, the client the value with the most recent timestamp. If required, 
and if the replicas have diverged at that point you can perform a read repair in quorum writes basically it ensures that the write was received and confirmed by at least a majority of the replicas replication factor by 2 plus 1 Finally, in the all consistency model, which is strongly correlates to the strong consistency model, all nodes will be queried and the reply for reads will happen only after all nodes have responded and a read repair is already performed. If any single node fails to respond for whatever reason, the read operation will fail in Cassandra. The same can be said for writes. You ensure that the all the number of nodes that is equal to the the replication factor for this write they respond before you acknowledge the write to the client even if one replica is unresponsive to the write operation this entire operation will fail now we'll look at failure detection and resolution in cassandra the nodes communicate with each other all the time using a special gossip protocol known as the accurate fail failure detection or afd if a write needs to happen to a node that's unreachable and it is supported by the current consistency model, that is, it's either a quorum or less, then the node that received the write request can keep a hint of that write. And a hint can be just regarded as, a, as an informal log or just a message that says that, oh, I received a write operation on this key and this is the new value. If and when the node that failed recovers, the hints are then forwarded for that node to catch up. 